Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Degree. This is once again from Starcon, New York City land. Upper right in corner, we have Jayun starting as the white Protoss. Bottom right in corner, we have Nyokan starting as the yellow Terran. This is from the retro round of the upper bracket. So I've got the, this this round of the upper bracket. I have one more round of the lower bracket, and then I'm out of I'm out of replays available as far as the games that did not get cast. So if there are matches you want to see, and you can harass whoever was part of the bracket to get them, uh, they can provide me the reps and I can do what's left. For everything that's left, all the way to the finals, uh, go to Artosis' channel. He's got the live feed that happened there, and that is the rest of the upper bracket. Uh, Nesh and Raz got into some of the commentary alongside Artosis. Kaido joined me briefly in the early stages. Zen was commentating with me, which was fun. I got to commentate with Tim, which was good. Uh, so, you'll, and you actually get to see me live if you're interested in that for whatever reason. Um, it was really fun, extremely fun event. As of this, that was like a month and a half ago. Yeah, by the time I shows you the pace, the pace of doing it in a day versus the time it takes to do an entire tournament entirely cast. One of these days would be amazing to have like an event like that, but have enough casters uh, and enough feeds to just have the entire event covered and then just make a cool bracket thing after the fact of everybody in all their positions all the way across. But anyway, future hopes and dreams. I'm hoping Zen will produce another one down the line, but in the meantime, uh, he's taking a respite. Barracks being constructed with a gas from Nyok. And these two guys, good friends. They know each other's build order. JY, uh, they know what each other are capable of. Jayun, I think this is his weakest matchup over all these days versus Terran, but he's still absolutely no slouch. Very formidable. I think Jayun arguably the strongest Protoss in North America right this second. Dragon and Boa not that far behind, or very, very close, but really th between those three are the arguments. SCVs now finding each other. I should say workers finding each other, so both players going to get an initial scout. Both of these guys capable of tricky styles of play. And Jayun, when I see him lose matches versus Terran, it's more often because he's trying to play a little bit too economically aggressive and go for three base plays and cut some corners without really covering his bases, without covering his assets, I'll say. Uh, Nyokin is capable of punishing that. Nyokin also one of those guys who will go drops, something along those lines, play a little bit crazy, but also very capable of long-term macro games. And I actually wouldn't be shocked if these guys practiced against one another before the land, so this might be one of those things where it's like, okay, what do we got for each other? Range being upgraded by Jayun. Marine up on the high ground, a Zealot already there, so it's going to be two Marines. Third one, a ways out, and that probe getting some good moving attack damage to soften up that Marine as well. A little bit off position defensive bunker, the Zealot able to sneak way out, able to get one Marine kill. Is he going to be able to get the second Marine kill? Potentially not. Factory finishes, that's significant. Gets a second Marine, which is great, now trying to hunt that third. Is at least going to get some scouting information. This SCV might want to flee for its life. First Vulture being built. A Dragoon following this up. So another probe as well. So a lot of pressure here from Jayun to start. Is maybe gets two SCVs on the follow-up. And that was well planned by Jayun. Three Marines and a Vulture now going to be able to defend, uh, push the rest of this back. Well, might be able to tempt it. That Zealot is going to be able to sneak its way out. Four kills on that Zealot with those two SCVs on retreat. So well played, and that's going to give Jayun, first of all, that confidence. Because that's not game-ending damage, but that's significant damage to start. Bunker being constructed. We have four Marines. Are we going to see a fifth Marine? No. Just a machine shop to follow things up. This almost forces Nyokin into a more defensive position. Look at these Dragoons on the forward field. Going to try to kill those Marines before they're able to get in the bunker. Jayun playing this very aggressively. One Stranded Dragoon taking some shield damage, but getting a lot of kills. Wow. Three additional kills and was able to scoot that additional Dragoon back to build shields. So now there's only a single Terran Marine in that bunker. Two Dragoons waiting for range to finish. Well, actually, range finished already. So going to be able to poke at that bunker and force additional economic damage. 
by pulling these SCVs off the line. And once Nyoka gets this siege tank out, because those Marines early were whittled down and wiped out, there's going to be an additional opportunity to maybe pick off that siege tank with two volleys, additional Marine constructed. So this is a lot of additional damage. We also have Robotics Facility and Second Gateway built behind us, but Jayun really controlling this early game. So Siege Tank, able to pick off the Weakened Dragoon. Nice pick off there by Naoka, and that really negated some of that threat. Three Dragoons now going to go ahead and pull back. Natural Expansion is in fact up. Naoka still actually holds the Worker Lead, which shocks me. After all of the early game punishment, he is going to drop an Armory at the natural. I don't know why this is the popular location these days for Terran. The Dragoon trying to get some bonus damage. The Siege Tank going to go ahead and deny that. Got some a few additional hits, but not quite in position to make it happen. Now additional SCV is going to have to pull off the line, getting yet another Siege Tank hit. Where's the additional Siege Tank going to have to trade? Jayun being very, very frustrating on the front. Ooh, not able to get the moving shot right there. Okay, now able to... Wow, nice there. Able to pick off two Dragoons. The third Dragoon, very weak. And that should shut down any additional shenanigans for Jayun. But at the same time, that's moving more into Detente land, where both players are going to kind of lick their wounds, assess the situation. Observatory dropped. Where I thought Jayun, with his early game harassment and the healthy Dragoon count, might be able to go for some aggressive play to follow things up with losing those additional Dragoons. He needs to play a little bit more passively. So I'm expecting more macro orientation for both these guys as far as the follow-up. Engineering Bay to respect potential Reaver drops. Third and fourth gateway planted with the Observatory. We're going to see a fifth gateway out of Jayun to play a little bit aggressive and maybe go for a bust. We'll have to see. Four gateways allows him to get a healthy troop count. And I think he just wants to play it solid and get a good Dragoon count out to deal with any Vulture pressure that might be out there and go ahead and make sure he gets a safe third. In the meantime, an additional factory planted for Nyokin. We'll see what Nyokin's up to. I think he's just going to try to play... I assume he's going to play more towards 2-1, although 2-1's kind of fallen out of favor for whatever reason. Maybe because players of this caliber have really figured out how to deal with it at this stage. Jayun is one of those guys... And where I'm like, oh yeah, he's going to have a healthy Dragoon count to play this safe. Instead, grabbing a Naked Nexus here at the 12 o'clock location. If this... Yeah, third factory dropped. We'll see if he has enough troops by the time Nyokin has that Vulture count out. This is a vastly improved style of play from Jayun recently. Is denying Vulture information, getting just pockets of Dragoons out in position and sweeping and finding the information he requires and making sure that the vultures just aren't able to sneak across and get the damage they're looking for. Observer heavily damaged, not able to get a look at the factory count, but Nyokin able to sneak a vulture into the 12 o'clock and discover that Nexus constructing is going to go ahead and leave it rather than... I'm not sure if that was spotted by Jayun or not. It's just going to make sure that a fourth wasn't snuck, but like, look at this. You got the damaged Dragoon hanging out here towards the left. You got another Dragoon that we'll see if it moves back, but kind of a pocket here to deal with Vulture sneaking out. Additional Command Center for a third being built for Nyokin, maybe to go for this nearby 6 o'clock location. And that would be more play for the long term 3 2. Probe taken out, but Dragoon going to be able to clean up the Vulture and see that Nexus timing. Few mines defensively placed. We are seeing a control tower. We'll see if we see a late drop. Science facility as well to move towards plus two weapon. Charm booster also being constructed. There's plus one weapons, but not a lot of troops. And we have that third already built. So Nyokin definitely going to go play more towards three base. And now Jayun tacking on. So he's up to six gateways. He's got a Reaver and two Zealots out there. He's going to be able to saturate that 12 o'clock. So I think he's going to have a healthy supply count. Goliath moving forward, Jayun not spotting it, so I don't know that he's going to be able to save this Observer if a Comsat drops, but no Comsat. Or, okay, there's the Comsat building. Potentially do that damage. And we'll see if Jayun just moves, I think, I'm not sure if he spotted this Command Center or not. With some little move forward. Zealot's going to try to lead the way to open up maybe a Reaver shot. Nyokin scooting out a lot of troops 
to bully this back. Needs to be a bit careful. Siege Tank takes a big Reaver shot. Fortunately, it wasn't massive spread. Now Dragoon's coming from the north. Getting a lot of Siege Tank hits. Nice denial by Jayun. And the Reaver took some damage. Is it going to survive, though? There's another Dragoon to the south. So some Dragoons being pushed back. But the Dragoon and the Reaver causing some trouble across that third. They were able to get a healthy amount of Siege Tank hits to keep that Siege Tank low, where I don't think Nyokes is going to feel super comfortable about planning the 6 o'clock. Sieging short. Man, that Dragoon has lived quite the life. He's going to force this command center back. More Dragoons making their way across, maybe to go for a backstab. There are some mines in between, but there is an Observer to go ahead and clear that out. Some nice delay and denial here from Jayun to slow down this third. I don't see any provocations from Jayun to go ahead and move and grab his fourth. Comsat mostly being expended to evict things to the six o'clock location. Vultures sweeping in, a Goliath holding the high ground. Might be able to punish, yeah, that shuttle. It does have the charm booster upgrade. Loses its life right there. But right now, Jayun with a massive supply lead. After taking out that previous round of siege tanks and denying the 6 o'clock, Nayokin dropping a whole lot of factories, just presuming he's going to be able to get the 6 o'clock up and running in short order. But he needs to fill in that troop count rapidly. And man, Jayun doing a fantastic job, killing yet another siege, another cancellation. This is just being, a fan being fantastically annoying right here. A couple mines to the south, a Dragoon platoon making its way across. And no Goliaths or turrets able to deny this, so... Reavers might be able to sneak their way out. Now spawning for double shuttle and some zealot bombs. Able to take out another Ford siege tank. And you can see, wow, Jayun continuing to deny this. So some clutter being built by Nyokin preemptively. But the Dragoons look like they might be able to take a lot of this down and the siege tank's still not here. There's only one siege tank nearby and the Reaver is still doing lots of damage, clearing some mines here. So Nyoka needs to dedicate more siege tanks to this position, and he just doesn't have the siege tanks to do it, it looks like. So the Dragoons making their way in, and Jayun putting on a masterclass of how to deny a base right here. And that's kept Nyokin's troop count sub-50 of his count. Great job with a continual harass. The siege tank being group prepared, that might get wiped out. Man, this is going to be a huge Reaver shot taking out SEVs and the siege tank. Now that command center, I don't know that Nyokin's going to be able to take this base at this stage. Because Jayun's going to have a sufficient economy where he can just roll up troops on the high ground and pot uh, potentially continually deny this. The siege tank count for Nyokin just too low. Fantastic damage done by Jayun. Going to walk up take out yet another siege tank and there aren't even any siege tanks in the natural at the second. Jayun could potentially end this. With And that was just off harassment walking in. Yeah, gonna clear out. I think he recognizes okay, maybe you don't even have any siege tanks at the natural expansion. Dragoon's now flanking and Nyokin pinned into two bases. Additional mind drag. Yeah, no siege tank hits. There's one siege tank up on the high ground. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor has completed, but a single aggressive shuttle could wipe that out, and Jayun can expand happily if he wants to. He's done a fantastic job clearing things out and just getting a massive amount of value. Engineering base scouting between zealots just sweeping across, some desperation vultures trying to make their way mid-map. Finding nothing. Bottom right is going to be mined out for Nyokin in, in not too long. And he doesn't have a sufficient army to push. He's only got... Well, he does. He has tacked on three factories to try to get... Or three machine shops, I should say. To get a sizable siege tank out to make his way back out. Jayun no longer trying to contest the 6 o'clock simply because he doesn't need to. He can play Gateway Man from here if he wants. Zelt leg speed on its way to completion. Gonna go ahead and grab his fourth. Continue to push up and contest this. The Reaver is able to get inside. Still gonna be able to take the siege tank out. And honestly, after this, this might be GG 
for Nyokin. Zealots walking to the low ground with the Reaver behind. Another Scarab shot able to take out another Siege tank. There, yeah, there's GG from Nyokin. Incredible play. Having a request to see how many kills we had on this Reaver at the end of the replay. Let's see if we can get a spot right there. Holy cow. I kind of wish I had an advanced screen. Oops. So, let's see if we can go just back a smidge. To see the kills right there. This is one of the things where I wish I could see a kill breakdown. Oh, God damn it. Come on. My pro gamer maneuver is not there. So we'll wait for this one of these reavers to plop out and see if we can get a pause before they die. 14 kills on that reaver, 11 on the other, and a significant amount of those kills were siege tanks. Incredible play from Jayun in game one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.